Welcome back. As we search for more efficient, cost-effective ways to feed our cattle, it's important not to forget about the productivity of our lowest cost feed source, rangeland and pastures. Many of us are already pushing pastures harder and maintaining a higher level of production requires careful management. As Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Kevin Ochsner learned from the range and pasture specialists at Dow AgriSciences, there are steps we can take this fall that will help ensure our grasslands remain in peak condition. Feed. It's the cattle producer's greatest expense. Anything you can do to shrink that bill can help improve your bottom line. Taking care of our rangeland and pastures is a great place to start, and there's no time like the present. Fall is an ideal time to evaluate your grazing plan, pull soil samples, cross fence a larger pasture, and don't forget about weed control. Mike Mechnig, Extension Weed Specialist at South Dakota State University, explains how undesirable plants can eat into productivity. It's really difficult to really quantify the effect weeds are having because certainly they'll reduce grass productivity, uh, which is getting to be more and more important as alfalfa and other hay prices increase. But it also just decreases the palatability of the grasses. I mean, the cattle will just won't graze those areas. So you could have grass there, but they'll just move on and go to a different area rather than try to pick through some of these weeds. And, you know, and then there's even health issues. You know, gum weed is getting to be a bigger problem in South Dakota, and that causes problems with their eyes eyes, you know, the cattle's eyes and things like that. So there's several different factors to consider with weeds that it goes beyond just the grass uh, productivity, but that alone is uh, incentive enough in a lot of cases. Treating those weedy problems during the fall can help keep them out of the picture come spring. Earlier this year, I sat down with Bob Masters and Pat Birch from Dow AgriSciences. We talked about some of the types of weeds that are good candidates for fall control. Well, noxious weeds are those weeds that are designated by law that must be con be controlled. So those are weeds that producers have to have to control just because it's the law. Sure. Uh, invasive species or invasive plants are, are are exotic. That is that they're not native to North America in the context that we're talking about today. Uh, these are introduced from overseas uh, as an ornamental, perhaps mm -hmm. that uh, got into wild areas or pastures and, and began to expand their populations or may have been introduced some time ago, centuries ago, as a contaminant in crop seed as European settlers uh, settled the United States, mm -hmm. a species like leafy spurge, for example. But one of the big issues with these invasive species, these exotic species, is that they were introduced without their natural enemies, the insects, the pathogens, et cetera, that kept those populations in check in their natural habitats. Uh, here, they don't have those natural checks, so they can be very aggressive. They can displace our native species mm -hmm. and really adversely affect the quality of our rangeland and pasture resources, not only from a livestock production perspective, but also from a wildlife habitat quality perspective as well. Biennial weeds uh, are ones that, that um, take two years to complete their life cycle, and there are a host of those as well. And these are some of the more high anxiety weeds that we deal with, uh, your biennial thistles such as uh, musk thistle, plumeless thistle, uh, bull thistle, uh, can all be a problem, as well as spotted knapweed is another biennial. In some areas, controlling winter annual weeds presents another opportunity for fall treatment. These weeds continue to take moisture from the soil throughout the winter months, making it harder for grasses to establish come spring. Winter annuals also can serve as host plants for insects that become destructive pests in corn and soybeans. We'll continue our discussion on fall weed management when NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen continues. Welcome back. Let's return to South Dakota and the experts at Dow AgriSciences to learn more about fall weed management. Fall offers several weed control advantages. Off-target crops and trees are dormant. The job gets done rather than put off, which sometimes happens during the busy spring season. Control can be more economical. And as SDSU's Mike Mechnick explains, for many weeds, properly timed fall treatments can yield a better return on your investment. There's been a lot of research done where they they track these herbicides and you know they find that with these fall applications you get more movement into the roots and for perennial weeds it's all about getting control of those roots. But we want to we want to make sure we have things timed right. We don't want to wait too long. You know a lot of people want to wait for that first light frost. 
but you know sometimes you can get a heavy frost and then that can desiccate the foliage and then you have to wait until next year so we generally shoot for any time in September or October those are two prime months for these fall applications where we can you know beat the heavy frost but still get in there and a lot of times people ask how late can you go for Canada thistle and usually as long as most of that leaf tissue is green once you start getting that necrosis setting in from those fall or from those fall frosts uh, then the control can drop off so you want to make sure you get those herbicides put on before the leaves turn brown. As things cool down here in the fall, we really want to get those herbicides put on on maybe a warmer day, at least above 60 degrees. That can make a difference for herbicide uptake and translocation. And so try to pick a warm day if you can. For fall treatments, it makes sense to choose a product such as Milestone or Forefront R&P that provides residual control to stop weeds into next spring. As Mike Mechnick explains, these products offer other advantages too. Before, we would kind of recommend a pint of Tordon and a quart of 2,4-D, and that would be good enough for maybe 70% control. But with this milestone, we're looking at 95% control the next year, and maybe even 90% control the year after that. So we're, now we're getting to a situation where we can have, we have a herbicide option that might give us two years of control. When we compare it, the amount of control you get Per, per, or the amount of dollars spent per amount of control, really Milestone gives you the most control per dollar spent. While fall treatments are highly effective, the big payoff comes next spring at pasture greenup. Especially in warm season grasses, you know, where that are dormant in the spring, you know, that's a good opportunity for those thistle plants, which emerge fairly early, to get a jump on some of those warm season grasses. And so you can relieve some of that competitive pressure by getting, by getting some control in the fall on some of these things and so that that certainly can help with the grass competition standpoint. It can vary from location, it varies by what grasses you have out there and that sort of thing but no doubt and people have seen this I mean when you have thistle patches out there cattle just don't like to graze those spots and so it almost takes that land out of production. Losing pasture and rangeland productivity certainly is a losing proposition for the cattle producer. Mechnick sees weed control as an important tool that can help producers extract more value from their grazing resource. There's a lot more people getting more interested in maximizing the potential of their pasture lands because hay, alfalfa, all those, you know, the, the corn prices, all those feed costs are just going through the roof now. And so certainly a, a major component of maximizing that productivity is get those weeds under control. Like we say, if we don't do anything, the problems just seem to get worse. It, it just seems like it can make a big difference in maximizing the grazing potential, not only for grass productivity, but also the palatability of that grass. For more information on weed management and for educational information from Dow AgriSciences, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org.